MJ Acosta Ruiz is an Emmy Award winning sports and entertainment host and journalist. She became the first woman of color to host a show at the NFL Network as host of NFL Total Access. And now she has a new show on Fuse Media. It's a series called Like a Girl, MJ Acosta Ruiz, now on the Scott Sand Show. Hi, how are you? Terrific. It's so nice to meet you and have you on the show. Uh, and oh I, I, I love the idea of your show because I'll, I'll admit as a guy, and I think we all have at some point used the phrase, you hit like a girl, you throw like a girl, sure. and, and meant it as an insult. You've taken mm-hmm. that phrase and used it to empower women. Yeah. And that's it's the starting moment of the episode is each athlete saying, you know, I ball like a girl. I, you know, I serve like a girl, whatever their respective sport is. And it's, it's really cool to see not just the athletes, but also young, young athletes really take it and put it as a, as a, as a positive, right? Whereas you're right, our whole lives, at least in my generation, it was intended as an insult and now it's been turned on its head for sure. So I, I went and played golf this past weekend, and I'm pretty sure I can't drive or chip like a girl at all based on some of the women <laughs> I play golf. <laughs> it's just that golf is like the one sport I just can't get into. Um, I like the sport. I'm just terrible at it. So, I'm so bad. I'm, it's I, so bad. I, I'm, I, I just lost like 75 pounds, so I think my, my drive was actually getting more than like 125 yards this weekend. Uh, but. Nice. The, the only time I, I can excel at golf is putting. And, you know, we have the LPGA Marathon Classic that mm-hmm. comes through our area, uh, and some of the best female golfers in the world play here. And and every year they come through, and I do a putting challenge down the hallway. So I, 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 I've beaten some of the best female golfers in the world at putting, but that's about it. Putting, most would argue, and my husband is among this group, is – the most difficult part because i think most folks just want to whack the ball as hard as possible that's me i just want to hit the driver <laughs> and nothing else i know there's a whole other set of clubs i'm disinterested in anything else in the back <laughs> mj acosta ruiz is here on the scott sand show uh it's her show on fuse media like a girl who are some of the people you talk to on your show oh my gosh our roster this year is unbelievable um star-studded if you will uh, our first episode was Deanna Flores, who's a, a world champion flag football player. Uh, we have two MMA fighters in the Combate Global League, um, Lucero Acosta and Melissa Amaya, Sydney LaRue, Ali Riley, and Kennedy Fuller from Angel City FC uh, here in LA. They're huge. Blau J. Johnson, who's, I think to me, one of the most exciting NCAA uh, basketball players at the moment. She's both a basketball player and a rapper and tapping into her full businesswoman side. Um, Taylor Townsend, who is a Wimbledon doubles champ. She's currently playing at the U.S. Open. And then we have an Olympian in Amaya Malab- uh, Emma Malabayo, uh, who just returned um, from Paris in gymnastics. So uh, we've got the best of the best on the roster. So, I, you know, I'm a big sports guy. I love watching a lot of sports, but i got to be honest, and, and I don't mean this to sound misogynistic, I, I really don't follow women's sports other than the, the women's national soccer team, which has always been stellar mm-hmm. and better than the men's team. Right. Uh, Venus and Serena Williams obviously catch the attention of the LPGA when it comes through, and I love golf. But it, it seems to me like Caitlin Clark has really brought women's sports back into the spotlight where, where it should be this year. Am I wrong about that? No, you're not wrong at all. And I think the, the, what athletes like Caitlin do is just through their excellence, showcase what we've all known to be true for so long in the arena of, of women's sports. I mean, within that same vein, Asia Wilson, who is one of the best, one of the goats, who is a future Hall of Famer in the WNBA, you know, she gives Caitlin her flowers all the time. It's like the next generation uh, of women who are coming in. But I think especially because of the presence of social media, of how viral things can go, we have so much more access to these athletes now that it, it's been this this perfect confluence of timing, excellence, championships, uh, visibility. uh, And so you heard the phrase, the Caitlin Clark effect quite a bit, and we're here for it. We'll lean into it as fans of of women's sports and certainly the athletes are hoping to leverage that into a place where it's fully equitable for them um, to not only slow the gender gap and close it entirely, but also get the resources that they really need at the professional level as well. We're talking to MJ Acosta Ruiz, the Fuse Media series, Like a Girl. Uh, it's on now. It's it's streaming now and available mm-hmm. on Fuse Media. Uh, you, you get into some hot-button issues as well, whether it be race, sure. inequality, uh, gender 
uh, body image pay. The, yeah. the hot topic in, in sports right now is is biological men participating in women's sports. As you're talking to these sure. women athletes, where do they stand on that? I think the biggest thing is the inclusivity, right? And to make sure that there is parity in sports. And so when we have these discussions, especially with with the athletes who are living it, who are having the discussions not only within their locker rooms, but also at the highest level in their boardrooms and the C-suites and the ownership suites, um, what they overwhelmingly, what we have found in our conversations is that they are supportive of trans women who are coming into this space and who want to be seen for who they truly are and just want to have the opportunity to live their life not just as citizens but also as athletes in their full form so it's a really layered and really nuanced conversation that i think it's tough because so many folks take this to the internet they take it to the platform they take it to the comment sections and that's never a place to have a truly nuanced <laughs> conversation right um no, but, no, never <laughs> never right, read the ever. comments <laughs> Ever. Um, but with within the landscape of sports, um, and, and you'll find people on with with a variety of of opinions on it, right? And and so I think there's there's still a long road to figuring out what is the best way <laughs> to be inclusionary, um, but to still honor and respect um, the feelings of all athletes as, as, a, yeah, it, as it is such a to it's, having them involved. It's a challenging conversation because you're, yeah. I, I'm not opposed to inclusivity by any means, but right. I'll have a conversation. I've, I've had Riley Green on my show a number of times, and, and the conversation with her that she points out, biological men have a distinct athletic advantage over biological women, and that's not exactly e- equitable uh, on the competition front. Right. At that point, you get into the conversation of transition, right, and of uh, hormone therapy and of balancing out the what you would consider, you know, scientifically what you would consider the male hormones and the female hormones. And there's a lot more that so many people don't know about what someone in transition is going through and what it entails and what even just genetically happens, hormonally what happens. And so, again, it's like there's so many layers to it. Um, that we even ourselves are not fully equipped to answer all of those questions because we're not going through it, right? We're not well versed in what a transition means and how that how that translates to the field of play and what that means for an opponent and what that means for that athlete. So it, it is, I think, still such on 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 the early stages of like even them themselves um, trying to get into it. it it's a lot. Like a girl, it's on Fuse Media. MJ Acosta Ruiz here on the Scott Sand Show. What's it been like for for you? Because sports journalism uh, hasn't already uh, always been a, an inclusive place for 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 women uh, as sports right. journalists. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's breaking through the walls. You know, I, I, the industry and and I don't I'm preaching to the choir here. The industry is tough. <laughs> the industry is tough. It it requires a lot of you uh, and from you. And I think you know. Holidays, who are those? I don't know her. Uh, weekends, come on, be serious. And that's just like what I call the surface level stuff that you just automatically have to put out of your mind if you want a job in media, if you certainly if you want a job in sports, weekends are mostly like when they happen. But I think just the landscape of being a hyper competitive business and then of being in a space where you're the first and many times also the only, um, it, it can be very difficult to navigate. So focusing on the job is an easy thing to say. Uh, but when you're in it, 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 it becomes tougher, right? Like blinders, putting blinders on has been really necessary. But I think I got to a point in my career several years ago where it's like, okay, well, I can't just be blind to things because they're happening to me and around me. And so if I don't stop this, uh, not just for myself, but for everybody else who's coming through, and I'm talking about all the isms, right? Racism, sexism, misogyny, sexual harassment, um, you name it. And I, I don't mean to minimize it by just rattling it off as a list, but more so to highlight that there is such a slew of things that you have to navigate all at the same time and do your job. Um, so it is it is very heavy. We're almost out of time here, and I, I realize that uh, I'm following you now on X on Twitter, MJ Acosta TV, <laughs> uh, Fuse Media. Yeah. Like a girl, real quick, who do you like this year in the NFL? We're obviously Lions and Browns and Bengals fans around here. Right, 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 right. 
Uh, I know I was looking at the map. I'm like, well, you got quite a few of the teams right around you in Toledo. A lot of, uh, lot, you know a lot of Steelers Lions, fans around here, too, believe it A lot of that. Steelers fans. The Lions have been one of more, the more fascinating teams, I think, in just their evolution with Dan Campbell over the last few years. It's a young, exciting, hungry team um, that I've really enjoyed watching, and I think people are still um, sort of looking over them, and they shouldn't. I'll say I, that. I feel like I could play for Dan Campbell and would want to. MJ, it's, <laughs> it's great to have you on. I appreciate it. I look forward to Fuse Media, Like a Girl, MJ Acosta TV on X on Twitter. Great to have you on. Thanks, God. Appreciate it.